end of the Roland Martin show is going to deal with uh, Bernie Sanders' uh, big uh, victory. It wasn't huge, but it was a big victory. He won by 14 points. But it, it's going to make the point that uh, I have been saying for a while. And again, um, I do favor uh, Bernie Sanders. I voted for him, and um, I would prefer to see him um, as president more so than anybody else. Um, each of the candidates has their own faults. Um, but uh, as far as uh, my belief that Bernie really is for the people, Anyway, let me play this segment, and I'm going to drop in every so often uh, to make commentary. Big wins in Wisconsin for Senators Bernie Sanders and Ted Cruz. Uh, last night, uh, of course, voters in Wisconsin, huge turnout, went to the polls uh, and gave... Now, yeah, it was a huge turnout, but it was a huge turnout for the GOP uh, Republicans. They set major records. But the Democrats did not have uh, what we could call huge turnout uh, yesterday. Both of them, their show of support on the Democratic side, Sanders picked up 56.5% of the vote, while Secretary Hillary Clinton had 43.1%. Well, this. Okay, so Sanders obviously had a 13, you call it 14, it's 13 point victory. Um, and. As far as the uh, committed uh, regular delegates, he picked up 10, okay, with a 13-point victory. That ain't going to do it. Now, what makes matters even worse is Clinton picked up seven superdelegates here, which obviously can be flipped, but uh, just for uh, edification at this point, uh, after last night, he basically netted out uh, three delegates. New York is obviously going to make or break him. So anyway, let's continue. And uh, Senator Sanders is on a roll and looking forward to a big challenge in the adopted home state of Secretary Clinton, New York. With our victory tonight in Wisconsin, we have now won seven out of eight of the last caucuses and primaries. Please keep this a secret. Do not tell Secretary Clinton she's getting a little nervous, and I don't want her to get more nervous. But I believe we've got an excellent chance to win New York and a lot of delegates in that state. Now, I, I think he's right, because he's going to have two weeks to really concentrate on New York, and Bernie Sanders has a history. Once he gets on the ground in a state and can spend a decent amount of time that he normally uh, can uh, pick up a tremendous amount of the electorate. Now, if you add that to the fact that Bernie Sanders is uh, is a favorite son, even though he is a senator from Vermont, you know, he was uh, born and raised in New York, i.e. Brooklyn, um, Clinton's going to have all that she can uh, handle here because even though she uh, was elected uh, to the Senate in New York, Clinton is originally from uh, Illinois, and uh, resided in Arkansas before uh, you know she spent her time in Washington D.C. in the White House and Secretary of State, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, she, even though she quote unquote uh, has represented New York, Bernie Sanders is a New Yorker. Well, that's one thing you can take uh, the boy or the man out of uh, New York, but you can't take New York out of the boy or the man. In fact, uh, Sanders has won, uh, tw excuse me, Se Secretary Clinton has won 20 caucuses and primaries. Sanders has now won 16 on the GOP side. Uh, Senator Cruz wins 48.3% of the vote. Donald Trump came in second with 35.1%. Ohio Governor John Kasich trailing far behind with 14.1%. After his victory speech, Cruz said there's hope to win the nomination. Tonight, Wisconsin has lit a candle guiding the way forward. Tonight, we once again have hope for the future. As a result of tonight, as a result of the people of Wisconsin defying the media, defying the pundits. I See, now that's a bunch of bullshit because, you know, Ted Cruz uh, uh, has benefited from the media being anti-Trump, the pundits basically uh, saying that the uh, Cruz is going to win this race. 
He's got the support of the governor and the GOP machine. If he couldn't win uh, in Wisconsin, and he should actually have won by more than he did, uh, he had no hope, period. So all the handwriting was on the wall, and they've been saying this for weeks, ever since, especially since uh, when Trump blew up about uh, the abortion issue and, and uh, a couple of other issues. Everybody's been saying uh, that Ted Cruz was going to win this. It was just a question of how much, but he's had everybody on his side. And, and, and I hate Trump, but you know Trump was uh, uh, fighting against the world here, and he's just lucky that he didn't do uh, worse than he did. But Ted Cruz is full of shit. I am more and more convinced that our campaign is going to earn the 1,237 delegates needed to win the Republican Yeah, you'll earn 1,237 delegates in fantasy land because that's basically the only place you're going to be able to uh, get those delegates. Basically, you're going into New York, and if you think that people from New York are going to vote for your ass, you got another thing coming. Trump is currently leading by... Uh, uh, with a majority of more than 50% over Cruz. I think Cruz has got somewhere around 10 to uh, to 15. If Trump can get a uh, 50% plus one vote, he takes all the New York delegates. So all the, uh, of the uh, gains that you got from uh, Wisconsin and a couple of other places where you've stolen uh, delegates are gonna be wiped out uh, after the uh, New York primary. If Trump can hold uh, that 50 point uh, majority uh, p portion of the vote. Speaking of delegates, uh, Clinton has 1,778, Sanders 1,097, 2,383 are needed to win the nomination on the GOP side. Trump 743, Cruz 510, and of course Kasich at 145. Let's get right to it, Ralph Chittams. That's the funny thing about Kasich. If you add all the people with delegates, Kasich is still in fourth pay place because Rubio has more delegates than he does at this point, and Rubio dropped out. Senior Vice Chairman, D.C. Republican Party, Angela Peoples, co-director of Get Equal, Dr. We Dr. Wilma Leon, political scientist and Sirius XM radio host. Uh, folks, uh, huge wins there. Uh, and again, folks, early on, all you heard, Clinton is running away, Trump is running away, but I kept saying, this is why if you let people vote. Stuff changes. I mean, absolutely, and I think that in this race, we've seen two things. Uh, what, what happened in Wisconsin was one, I think, potentially a the, the realization of um, the momentum for, for Trump really slowing down. And I think the question for the GOP is, the, the, the sort of stop Trump movement in the Republican Party is, is, do they have enough time, right? Is it too little, too late um, to stave off a really embarrassing nomination? I think on the Democratic side, um, with Bernie Sanders, the momentum is really in his favor in, in a really interesting and authentic way. I think that the the math is still challenging for him to win the nomination through delegates. But the question for Hillary Clinton is: even if she does win um, through the numbers, if she wins in, under this sort of continuing inevitability, um, it's really going to have some issues with uh, turnout in in. November. Well, when we think about uh, what took place in 2008 between Obama and Clinton, he won a lot of the early states, built up a huge lead. She came back and won Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, but it simply wasn't enough. Uh, you got New York coming up. Uh, she's got about a 10, 12 point lead. Many thought she would have more. That's going to be a huge barometer in terms of exactly where the campaign is. You look at the exit polling numbers. Uh, he is killing her when it comes to young voters. Uh, also, when it comes to independent voters. Absolutely right and the question here is going to be I still don't see understanding that the math is still available but I, I still don't see at the end of the process how, how Bernie overcomes the lead that Hillary has already uh, amassed the question then becomes what does Hillary do with the message what does Hillary do with Bernie's people and on the on the Republican side I think it's very interesting to see what conservative talk radio in Wisconsin really did to Donald Trump. Yep. And at this point of the six, process... Six radio show hosts say it, we're taking this guy down. And and it's also important uh, to, to see people now are talking about Paul Ryan coming out of this convention being the Republican nominee. And this is really troubling for Trump because this is a time as the front runner when you're supposed to be consolidating your lead, right. expanding your base, and he seems to be sinking quickly. Ralph, stop the, the uh, anti-Trump people. Yes, they are coalescing around uh, Senator Ted Cruz, but in many ways he's simply the 
vehicle to stop Trump. I don't think any of these people actually like Senator Ted Cruz, but he's the best shot to get to the convention, and then all of a sudden it becomes wide open. Well, they clearly don't like him. I was at a, a conference yesterday, and not one person in the room actually likes Ted Cruz. They are all just sit, wanting to stop Donald Trump. And so what's going to happen, we're going to go into Cleveland with no one having the necessary delegates. It's going to turn into a floor fight. It's going to be a bloodbath. And the Republicans are not going to win the presidency in November. I think I think both parties have an issue with um, this, the idea that the, the nomination will be decided at the convention. It sounds a lot about like process, about insider, uh, and, and people, whether no matter who comes out of both of these conventions, right? We're on the Democratic side, we're talking about super delegates. On the Republican side, we're talking about a brokered convention and, and you know, sort of whatever that means to the average voter. I think you're really going to have an issue with um, turnout and enthusiasm as we get to November. Speaking of turnout, folks, uh, yesterday, a lot of folks were talking on social media about Nick Cannon. Is he out to destroy the 2016 election? All right, so now I'm, I'm uh, basically... Uh, just looked at the, this section of it. I'm going to do a separate video on Nick Cannon because this uh, this guy's a fool. But uh, as I've been saying, Bernie waited too long, number one, to attack Hillary Clinton on her record. And she's got a record that is easily attackable. Number two, he failed to get his butt down into those southern st states early on. Okay. And again, was he going to win those southern states? No, he was not because he had zero name recognition versus Clinton's 100% name recognition. His job was to cut the margin, okay? And now, you know, he's still down by 200 some odd, uh, uh, call them uh, committed uh, delegates. And um, it's just, and I don't honestly see any way for him to make up that distance. So now what he's going to have to depend on and what nobody wants to see is the super delegates because people are going to claim if, if Clinton gets uh, the nomination because of those super delegates, they're going to claim the fix is in. If he could talk those super delegates uh, into coming to his side, basically, basically, you know, they're going to, the Clinton people are going to go uh, flipping berserk. So um, again, he could have made this a lot easier. Uh, if he had just spent time uh, down in the southern states and believed in himself and believed that he could have convinced enough people to keep this damn thing close. Now, Ted Cruz is another story. Ted Cruz, uh, his only function is what he just did uh, yesterday, which was to win Wisconsin. That win effectively will deny uh, uh, Donald Trump the 1,237 delegates that he needs to win on the first ballot. Once that first ballot clears, Ted Cruz is going to get kicked to the curb because they hate Ted Cruz. Donald Trump won't be able to pull in the requisite 1,237. So I'm going to predict that it's going. To, it's not going to be Kasich. Kasich can forget it. I'm going to predict that there's going to be something, somebody else who is not currently running but possibly has run that is going to uh, become the uh, Republican uh, nominee.